Hey everybody, it is Saturday evening. Uh, man, it's been a beautiful day here in Lancaster, hasn't it? Hope you got to enjoy it. Got to be outside a little bit. Um, I've worked all day outside. This is our back porch. Uh, looking to our back backyard, and so I thought maybe you'd like to see that. Um, just want to do really a pretty brief uh, broadcast this evening. Of course, tomorrow we'll have our our normal one, uh, our Sunday message, and so forth. But um, I want to welcome you to to our home and and hope this is a blessing to you for a few minutes this evening. Um, Excuse me, I'm not in my preaching clothes, still in my work hat, and uh, and um, and the shirt I've worn all, all day. Remember these awesome shirts that Olivia got for us in, in her fundraiser last year? Um, love this shirt. But anyway, I'm uh, glad to have a few minutes together um, this evening. So, again, plan for the next week uh, is... To sort of focus on what a lot of the religious world is focusing on, which they call Holy Week, uh, which begins tomorrow with a Palm Sunday, and the message tomorrow will be on Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, and uh, and we'll we'll figure out a little bit about why they call it Palm Sunday, but we're looking at it more in terms of uh, the most important week in the history of the world. That's how I like to refer to it. Because it certainly was that. And I'll try and do a broadcast each day this week where we'll talk about what happened on that day of the last week, the most important week in the history of the world. And the reason I'm uh, sending a, a broadcast out this evening is that we do know a little bit about what happened right before that week started. Um, on either Friday or Saturday, today's Saturday, of the week before the last week. And just want to read some verses, make a few brief comments on them uh, tonight that reflect on those couple of days leading up to the last week. We're going to be in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, and um, this is where Jesus uh, begins to come into the area of Jerusalem, um, actually on the, the little town that's across the hill from Jerusalem, the hill called the Mount of Olives. Um, Jesus comes to a town called Bethany before he comes into Jerusalem. And as we study the last week, we'll notice that it seems like every day after the events of the day, Jesus goes back out across the hill to Bethany and stays. He had very close friends there. He had a place to stay there. And uh, I think about every night, except for, of course, Thursday night, um, which is the night of the betrayal and the arrest, Jesus spends the night in Bethany. And so as we um, look at John chapter 12, verse 1, uh, you'll notice that it says six days before the Passover, and if you calculate that out, that gets us from um, about Saturday, Friday or Saturday, until until Thursday. Passover begins on Thursday evening, following um, Thursday evening uh, after six o'clock. They sort of reckon their days as beginning at six p.m. The next day begins at six p.m., and so the Passover begins Thursday evening. And, and so here it says in John 12, 1, six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And uh, that gives us a little feel for where he's staying. Um, Lazarus is from this little town across the hill called Bethany, and uh, Jesus comes there six days before the Passover event. And then some interesting things things happen uh, when he arrives in Bethany reading on verse 2 says so so they gave a dinner for him there Martha served and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at table Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from 
pure nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. So you have this interesting uh, exchange that takes place, and all this foreshadowing, you know, we know that, that Judas is going to be the one who betrays Jesus at the end of the week. And, of course, John knew that, too, as he wrote this. He alludes to it. But you can sort of get insight into Judas's struggle and his character. He's, uh, he seems to be a thief and um, puts on airs about caring about the poor. It's not really what he's concerned about. He's, he's concerned about having charge of the money. And uh, Jesus is anointed here by Mary. And uh, it's just a, a beautiful and a, sort of a sad story, depending on what character you're looking at. As it uh, concludes, um, verse 9 and, uh, and following, notice what it says. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. So uh, to sort of go back and, and read the story of the raising of Lazarus, one of the great miracles and, and works of power that Jesus did, but it had apparently been something that had convinced a lot of people. Uh, we understand that, don't we, of who Jesus was. He raise, raises Lazarus. And isn't it sad that the Jewish leaders oh. here who, who um, oh. don't appreciate the power of oh. Jesus, they, oh. they, um, they, they, oh. they want to put Lazarus to death? because he was bringing people to Jesus. The story of his raising was bringing people to Jesus. It's incredible, isn't it? So desperate to hold on to power that they would uh, deny the power of the resurrection. These are the events that we know about that took place on Friday or most likely Saturday before um, Jesus actually comes into Jerusalem the next day on on. Uh, what the world calls Palm Sunday, but it's the Sunday before Resurrection Sunday. And uh, I said, tomorrow we'll look at that account of, of Jesus entering the city and uh, what a lot of people call the triumphal entry. Um, in fact, we're going to make the point that it doesn't seem very triumphal, at least in the way we normally think of that. Really hope you're doing well and that you're enduring this time of uh, of total disrupt of normal routine and uh, hopefully we're beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel of all this uh, it's uh, a, a challenging time I was thinking today you know this is this is going to be something that we tell our grandchildren and great-grandchildren about you know um, they're, they're going to be asking us what was it like the great pandemic of 2020 and we're going to have stories to tell, aren't we? Let's make sure they're good stories and that uh, we can tell about how God's people s stepped up and served and endured and loved and maintained faith. Hope you have a great night. Look forward to spending the Lord's Day with you tomorrow and uh, sharing together in worship. God bless you. And uh, hope to see you soon.